G'day guys, it's Isaiah Huffnance here. If you don't know me, I travel Australia full time in this FJ and our trailer. We're currently in quarantine due to COVID-19. As you can see, my hair's a bit messy. We're based in New South Wales here in the Hunter Valley region until COVID settles down, which means it's mod time. Uh, so we just received the iDrive unit. If you don't know what an iDrive is, it increases throttle resp response and lets you customize uh, your throttle response. So a few skeptics on these units who say that they're not worth the money, but then a million raving reviews about people who say that they wouldn't drive their current vehicle without one. So I was intrigued enough to get one. We do enough kilometers to justify it. They're actually very cheap, normally around $300. So a pretty cheap uh, modification to do to your vehicle to potentially get uh, a little bit, not more power, but uh, maybe more perceived power and definitely a better throttle response. So we're gonna install it, see how we like it, and uh, give you a review on it. All right, so this is what's in the box. Very much like an Apple unboxing experience. So you've got the unit. We pull that out. We have the uh, wires that we're going to install on the throttle uh, sensor and then we have a couple of stickers and cable ties and the instructions all right so what we need to do is identify where the plug on the back of the throttle is so coming in find the accelerator pedal and there should be a plug on the back of it okay so I've located the plug on the back of mine now iDrive recommends that if you're unsure, you remove the uh, accelerator to unplug the plug there because the pins are easily damaged. So I'm gonna have a better look at this one and make a decision on whether I'm gonna remove the accelerator or whether I'm comfortable with just undoing the plug and doing all the work with it still attached. Now that the plug's undone from the accelerator, I need to plug this one into where we just unplugged the original. And then we need to plug the original into the back of this to piggyback it. All right, so we have the plugs in now. So now we just need to decide where we're gonna put the iDrive unit. This is where we control what settings we want. You want it close, uh, close and easy for the driver to access and use. Uh, do keep in mind that there is gonna be a little bit of LED glare, so don't put it too much directly in your sight. So for me, I'm thinking probably somewhere here on the FJ. Um, and then we just need to run this wire behind the dash and plug it into the other end and then cable tie it all up so it's out of the way. Okay, so how do you attach the iDrive? Bit of adhesive on the back. Make sure you clean the area. And make sure it's nice and level. All right, so that's now all tidied up under the dash so that nothing's gonna fall down and interfere with my pedals. So now when we turn the ignition on, this should light up, which it does. So, from what I can tell, it's all installed. So we're going to go for a drive and test it out. All right, I've warmed up the car. Uh, we're gonna start in automatic control, which is where, depending on how hard I press the accelerator, it decides what mode it's gonna use for me. This is the one that most people talk about leaving it in. Then there's the economy modes, which is for reduced throttle response. Um, that would be handy off-roading, crawling, all of that. And then the ultimate mode is like a ludicrous mode where you go uh, get a much faster throttle response. So apparently U9 is pretty nuts. And then you've still got your standard factory mode, which is if you wanna go back for whatever reason to the factory Toyota throttle response, um, that replicates it. So what, I, what I'll actually do, instead of starting in auto mode, Let's start with uh, the standard Toyota factory and we'll work our way up. Okay, so we're in factory Toyota mode, rolling out of the driveway. Nothing feels different as it should. All right, on the main road, I'm gonna change it to Auto control now. So the iDrive is going to choose the responsiveness. So very light on the throttle right now. 
already noticed a bit of difference there. Didn't take as long to get going or, or as hard of a press to get going. So we'll just stay in this mode for a while. Because what we haven't done is um, actually given it a bit of a boot in this mode. So I'll wait until I get to a wide open space and then we'll give that a shot. Okay, so we're coming up to an 80 zone. So what I'm gonna, I've got no cars behind me. I'm gonna come to a complete stop and then see how fast this thing takes off in auto control mode. Three, two, one. Definitely less delay. All right. Auto control mode's pretty cool. I think that's what I'll be leaving it in pretty much indefinitely unless I'm off-roading. Um, maybe having it in a ultimate mode when I'm towing, but just for driving around the city, auto control would be the perfect setting. Okay, so I'll put it in ultimate. Now I'm turning it up to nine. So we're now in the, the highest ultimate control setting. So something I'm going to monitor with this in the future is what fuel economy we're doing. I've had a few people tell me that it's not going to change my fuel economy. Um, and then I've had a few people tell me it's going to get me better. And then a couple tell me it's going to get worse. Personally, I think it comes down to how much of a petrol head you are. Okay, U9's pretty cool. Barely touching the pedal to get going. So I'd, I'd be recommending the iDrive to anyone who wants to do a basic upgrade to their vehicle uh, for under $300. Pretty good unit, uh, definitely changes the way I drive. Putting it back into auto control mode now, which is probably where I'll be leaving it. So I might be putting out some future videos on the fuel economy, um, how it handles towing, how it helps towing, um, you know, once we've done five ten thousand kilometers with it a bit of an update video